Hello there, it's Sally Cathcart here from The Curious Piano Teachers. And today it's Tuesday, so usually I would do a Tuesday teaching tips. However, we're going to do something a bit different today and I'm going to give you a musical shower. Now you might be saying, what is a musical shower? Well, it's where we look at a piece of music in quite a lot of detail really and uh, I can share with you some of my thoughts about it. So we get in enveloped in the music, if you like, which is why we're all here. It's what, what we're all about, isn't it? And the piece of music today is going to be The Little Shepherd, which is by Debussy, and it is from his sweet collection of pieces called Children's Corner. Now, I've chosen Debussy today because on Sunday it will mark 100 years since his death. So Debussy died on the 25th of March 1918 and I think that's a good enough reason to have a celebration of some of Debussy's music. I shall write something about the piece as well and give you a bit of the context in Friday's blog so do go over and have a look at that on Friday. But in the meantime, right now I want to focus on the music. Let me just play you the very opening. So, The Little Shepherd is the fifth piece in the children's corner and it really is probably one of the most miniature pieces um, of this miniature set that you can possibly imagine. It's just two pages long and if you don't know it then please do go and explore it because it is the most fabulous piece of music as I hope you'll see. Now Debussy expert Paul Roberts, um, according to him, this music, The Little Shepherd, has all the fundamentals of music found within its bars. It has song, it has dance, it has harmony, and it has silence. I'd like to explore those four things a little bit. You just heard the opening melody, and for me, this is a shepherd out of doors. It is a shepherd with his flute. And of course, Debussy is quite well known for his solo flute pieces. Uh, we've got things like uh, La Fée Midi d'un Fawn, which has got a beautiful flute solo at the beginning, uh, as well as Syrinx. And so I just can picture that very, very easily here. This opening melody, it's just one line of music. It's what we call monodic. And it is very sinuous. It weaves in and out. It moves mostly by step with just the odd little uh, skip. So for example, we have an octave here, and then it drops down by a third. So it is almost arabesque-like, and if you uh, go into the blog on, on Friday, I'll talk a little bit more about arabesque and what the bigger meaning of the arabesque is. So you might say, well, okay, what's, what's the tonality of that? It sounds a bit mysterious, and that's exactly it. It, it is mysterious. Um, the key signature for the whole piece is A major and yet we start on a G sharp in this section and it really doesn't sound like A major at all. It finishes on a D and I think we could say that it is um, in the Dorian mode, starting on B. Yeah. Although it's rather vague, but I think that's the closest we can get. And uh, what a lovely way that would be to introduce a pupil, just to get them to do some improvising based on that B Dorian scale. Um, so the piece, this opening section, weaves up and down, twirls around, and then it reaches a place of rest. And now we're on in the next section, which I'll play to you, to the dance. And in this section it becomes quite sprightly and it has a lovely crisp dotted semiquaver, demi-semiquaver rhythm like this. move 
focus on that. And when you're learning this, when you're encouraging pupils to learn it or playing it yourself, then just really make sure that that dance rhythm is really crisp. Don't want any soggy dances going on. And has a lovely, that, that lovely phrase again, all the way through. With the change into triplets. I have to say in this one, it is really important that you are absolutely um, on, on the ball with, with the rhythm. There is no room for vagueness here. Debussy has written all the rhythmic changes he wants into the piece. And so it is our job as the performer to, to interpret that and to get that absolutely right. The other thing to watch with this, this particular section is clarity in the left hand. And again, Debussy has written exactly what he wants. So he's written a G and an F together. And you hold the F while the G moves to the A flat. And the G and the F have got a tenuto underneath it. And notice how I'm shading off on the A flat. So it's one, important. So that is the second section which is the dance element and then on to the third part which is the harmony and after all that song and then dance what Debussy does is he puts in a perfect cadence in the key of A major. Here's the bar before this. Does chord two seven B A D and F sharp, followed by chord five seven E E G sharp E and then it, and the D as well, and then he puts a little run in for the left hand down to A major. Let me just make sure that we're really enjoying it by spreading it out across the piano. I love those moments. Let me just play you that little bit again so you can really listen and enjoy that perfect cadence and then these beautiful chords and listen to the piano because it just goes oh yes I love this shimmer shimmer shimmer. Here we go. the song, we've had the dance, we've had the harmony. The fourth element was silence and the, that is the silence there that follows on from the cadence. You have um, two bars, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And the third and the fourth beat have nothing on them. Just enjoy enjoy your relationship at that point with silence yeah even though it's a silence that is contained to two beats so it's it's an interesting thing is it's about getting hold of time and that's what we do in music we frame time we frame life itself if you like so enjoy the silence so that all that i've just played you there the dance the song the dance the harmony and the silence make up the first section the a section and you could say that that is all based around A major or A. Then we go into a B section, which I'm not going to go into in great detail, except to say it has got many of the same elements or some of the same elements. It starts with song. Yeah. Um, it has a dance, but it's slightly different. And it's much shorter. However, it still has a perfect cadence. So Debussy has gone to the dominant. And then we have exactly the same. So that's the second section, much shorter than the first section. 
and then that's followed by A1, so it's a, a reprise, if you like. And we start with the melody again, but this time it's more impassioned. It's, it's, it's slightly more um, fervent. Yeah, and then we have the dance. Um, and then it builds up to a climax, so we gradually get faster. so we can't we can't overdo it and again a bit like I was saying earlier about the voicing you've got to be really careful here with the voicing we really want to hear those four notes but particularly the B sharp at the top and for those of you that might have a score this is bar 24 really worth exploring the voicing exploring the different permutations that you can get but we need to hear How do you play the C sharp that comes after it? A little bit quieter, that way that it's really very, very poignant. And then we have, um, if you like, a bit of a coda at the end where we return to. And we finish again with another perfect cadence in the key of A major. Again, that helps you to explore your relationship with silence. Okay, so that's an overview, if you like, of Debussy's Little Shepherd, and now I'm going to play it all the way through. <laughs> 